Hello and welcome to a very special episode of World Traveler Cooking. We're celebrating 400 subscriptions. And as I've been doing for every 50 subscriptions, we are covering one of the French mother sauces. In this case, Valuita or Velvety sauce. Um, and this is a sauce which um, you can easily make at home. Um, it's great for pairing with chicken or seafood. Sometimes people use a fish broth instead of a chicken broth like I'm doing today. Typically if they're going to serve it with a fish. And then this is used to make uh, some of the other uh, daughter sauces, which we will cover at the 500 subscription mark. So, um, the ingredients here are very simple. We have 100 grams of flour, 100 grams of butter, um, a bit of nutmeg, some salt, some pepper, and a liter of uh, chicken broth. And I've made my own chicken broth here today. Uh, I will have a video for that up uh, fairly soon. So um, this is a fairly simple sauce to make. We will go ahead and get started now. Uh, I'm going to make this in a wok. Um, we're going to start by making a white roux, and then we will we will add our broth, and then we will season. So the first step is to make a white roux, so we're going to start by adding our butter. And as this melts, we will add the flour, but I'll be back in a few moments as this melts. Okay, I think this is melted enough, and I don't want the butter to burn. So I'm going to stir in my flour. And from here, I'm going to basically be stirring it with a metal spatula. I have this on a fairly low heat. Basically, just as this continues to melt, it'll work into the flour and we will get our roux. So I'll be back as that completes. Now this is just about in, so I'm going to let this cook for just a short period of time. Now, because this is a reactive pan, some of the seasoning will end up in the sauce. And we'll darken it a little bit, that's all right. But we don't want to cook this uh, roux and fully brown it. We want it to still be quite white. So, as this heats up a little bit, I will start adding my um, broth. Okay, so I can see it boiling a bit. Uh, I've let it boil for like 30 seconds or so. So, stirring a little bit here. Some people like to use a whisk. I actually prefer to use a spatula because I find that works better with the roux. And we're basically going to slowly work our sauce in, little bit by little bit, diluting the roux with the sauce, making sure we don't end up with lumps. I'll be back as this completes. Now I've gone through about a third of my broth already, and you'll note this is still the consistency of very thick porridge. So I'm sure you're probably wondering, is this actually going to thicken enough? I'm pretty sure it will. Um, if not, you're going to have to add more water or broth or something, but uh, you should be fine. So we're just going to keep doing this, maybe 50 or 100 milliliters at a time. Work it in nicely. Stir it until it's homogenous, and keep repeating. And one thing about metal spatulas on reactive pans is that, the, is that the sauce can go through the holes, and that can actually make mixing it kind of easier. So, I'm just going to keep this up. And now, at the halfway mark, we're closer to like a ordinary porridge. And just a quick taste of that shows that this is developing a nice and uh, velvety texture. So we're just going to keep this up. And I suppose I should show you my technique for stirring it with the um, with the spatula. So I pour in maybe 100 milliliters or so, maybe 50, maybe 100, maybe 150. And then I start stirring it. And you're going to see that this separates it first. But if I take the spatula flat and I stir it around on the bottom like this, uh, it mixes in really fast. And you can see here we're already like into thin porridge territory and or even really thick sauce territory. This is starting to look really nice. So <clears throat> don't be too concerned if it seems too thick at first. So we just keep 
repeating. And we see this sauce take shape. And this is actually looking like a really nice sauce here. Oh, look at that. Look at that texture. There's still what look like perhaps a few small, well, I don't even think those are lumps. This is looking really good. So I have just added the last of my, um, just added the last of the uh, broth. And you can see the, the, um, this is nicely worked in now. And now, some people like to skim off the top. I actually don't see anything to skim off the top, so maybe we'll come back and do that later. Next step actually would be to season this with salt and pepper and with some nutmeg. Um, and then we'll let this simmer for a little bit. So. So I actually started with a fairly salty broth, so I don't have to add too much salt. I am gonna add a nice bit of pepper though. We'll stir that in. That's actually smelling really good too. More pepper. And I definitely have the right amount of sauce. Salt, sorry. That should be okay, I think. Especially since this is fresh ground, it'll be a little stronger. Obviously, if you're using pre-ground, you may want to add more. But also with the fresh ground, uh, coarse ground, you'll get like sort of that peppery look, which I like. Some people don't. This is looking good. Next, we will grate just a bit of nutmeg in. So for nutmeg, just going to use a star grater. Just a bit. They use maybe they use maybe an uh, eighth of a nutmeg. Stir that all in. And taste it again. All right. And now we're going to let this simmer for up to half an hour. Now for the taste test. I'm just going to take a crayfish here. You could use chicken or other things. I'll put a bit of sauce there. And we're just going to try the crayfish with the sauce. And now for the taste test. Just going to pull this uh, crayfish tail apart. Smells. Of course, the crayfish also smells good. I love crayfish. Right, trying this with the sauce. This is a wonderful set of flavors. It's uh, You get the nutmeg, the butter, the pepper. Um, the texture is really smooth. This is really delicious. Now, I'm actually gonna have just a little more of the sauce. Huh? Here. Quite savory, too. Now, if you find this content useful and interesting, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Um, free to do, and it helps this channel grow. I'll have below a, a series of places where you can find, follow, and support my work. Um, if you want to get in touch with me, uh, probably the easiest way to do that is via an Instagram message. Um, uh, but at any rate, bon appetit. Uh, the recipe's in the description. See you next week.